So we're now going to extend this model, having added mortality with a dose of debugging. We are now going to add birth. Now births can also be added in a number of ways. Where would a, how would we capture births? Would, it, would anyone mind give me a bit of tea? No. Thanks very much. Um, uh, how would we add births to this, ladies and gentlemen? How would we add, where would we add births in the model? To, well we could add them to Maine, but births are a bit different from immigration because births are fundamentally driven by people in the population. The more people in the population, the more births there are. You could think of it as a life event that happens to a person. Mm -hmm. And in this model, moreover, we not only have unisex persons, we actually have a distinction between men and women. And we might want to take that into account, their sex, right? Do you see that? Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, let us calculate births. Okay, so we can do so in a number of different ways. I think I will do it in the following way. We could do it with an event. The problem is that that event might have to change in its frequency of occurrence with age, and it's just easier to do with a birth state chart, okay? In general, when you have varying event, ha varying hazards, it's easier to do in a state chart. So let's make this a fertility state chart, okay? And we're going to have two states. We're going to have a non, not pregnant state, and we're going to have a pregnant state. And we will have a transition associated with conception, okay? Transition associated with conception. Okay, and now there'll be a transition back from pregnant to non-pregnant. There'll be associated with delivery. We'll assume that 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 is associated with the timeout of nine months. We'll pick months here. Okay. Now, right now, this is a fixed timeout. Incidentally, we could, ladies and gentlemen, we know that there's enormous amounts of data huge volumes of data on durations of pregnancies, empirically. Notice right now we say a timeout of nine months. Uh, in other times, we might say it's a timeout of a certain number of days and draw the number of days from a custom distribution. Right? That's, don't, don't think that timeouts have to be fixed numbers, have to be fixed numbers that are just hard-coded or, or that are constant, always the same thing. You can have a timeout whose value, the, the number of days until the event occurs, till you leave the state is drawn from a distribution. It's a very common pattern, okay? Okay, ladies and gentlemen. But first we have this issue of fertility here. All right? Fertility, the, a woman um, uh, will be subject to a certain fertility rate. And note my words, a woman is subjected to a, is, is, is associated with a certain fertility rate, okay? Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to set this right now to be a rate. And I'm going to set this rate at first to be a constant. I'm going to make it 2.0 per 70 years of life, something like that. Well, we can make it a, a time varying, an age varying quantity in a moment. Um, but we'll make it two over the course of, of the 70 years, okay? And there's a key restriction though. If this is a fertility rate, by the way, normally I'd put that in a parameter in main or make it a constant, a 
constant that I explicitly mark. Ladies and gentlemen, this rate, what should be, what should be the restriction on this? It should only be females. Thank you very much. Okay, that's great. Thank you. That's great. Yeah, thanks. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much. So the guard here, there's a thing called a guard. And the guard means this transition will not fire unless a, this certain condition is true. So the guard here is that the person's sex equals female. That will be the restriction here. A male will never go down here. So this limits it to females, okay? Delivery, ladies and gentlemen. What needs to occur at the point of delivery? The baby, ladies and gentlemen, needs to be added to the population. Does it not? Ah, forgot to mention another point which I made earlier. We'll get back to that, okay? The baby needs to be added to the population. How do we add a baby to a population? Yeah, add under bar population. But we, who do we have to ask? Where does the population live? It lives in Maine. So we need to say Maine dot add under bar population. Uh oh. Okay, Maine dot add under bar population. It's not. It's not doing autocomplete again, okay? That was the root of the problem before, I might add. I don't like that. Um, sorry? I wonder if it's a system of adding. I know. I know that sometimes goes on and that, that's possible. Um, here, the model's a happy camper right now. So it's not like it's, it's, it should be in a bad state. It's just not auto-completing. Okay. okay, so we're gonna add a person to the population and it's a good lesson from before though that we need to be sure that it's, um, that it's okay. So we need to specify two things, their sex and their birth time. And normally when we do this auto-complete, it will tell us what, um, uh, what order to have them in. I happen to know it's in the order of sex and population. So, ladies and gentlemen, maybe for sex we will pick a, a sex with equal likelihood. Is it an easy way to do that? Sex dot, oh gosh. Um, yeah, sex dot, it's like sex dot random. No, it's sex.values.randomfrom. Um, normally, I rely on autocomplete about that. I don't like that at all. Why is it not autocomplete? I, I saved it. Yeah. Um, main dot. Yeah, it's not doing it. Okay. Sorry? There is a sex distribution. I could certainly use that. Um, there's actually a way to say just pick them with equal likelihoods. And uh, it's, I think it's random. Random from sex exactly sex dot values exactly la marche or two um, <laughs> yeah um, random from sex dot values right yeah yeah okay here we go right and next we need to specify their birth time what's their birth time. Right now, sorry, so we do time. Okay, now we'll see if it can build it. Okay, it says it completes it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna see if it, I'm gonna cause a deliberate problem, foobar, um, just to see if it, look at that, success. Holy the way ba. Yeah, okay, okay. Um, I'm gonna save another version. Okay, version six, I'm, I'm gonna just say version six with badness. 
right, with, with a problematic compilation. This is really bad. <laughs> it's really bad. Uh, okay, okay, I'm, 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 a, I'm shocked. Um, look at, do you see that, Winchell? Oh, look. Yes. Okay. Uh, sorry. This uh, like that. Yeah. That's a yeah. 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 But you notice it just started generating the errors. Yeah. That was after you did save as. Yeah. After you save another one. So if you just saved it, and, and that's what I did. Yeah, I did oh, save it as well. So okay. Yeah. Okay, we'll go and investigate it. We don't have to trouble them with our forensics. Okay. Great, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, moving right along. Um, here we go. So let me put this up on the big screen and let me explain it. By the way, the question is, does autocomplete now work? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Main dot add population. So we're adding a baby to the population. This baby needs two types of information to be added. Why two types? because it has a birth, it has a sex that it needs, and a birth time. Um, and I would hazard that maybe this will actually fill it in now. Yes, there it is, see that? Yeah. See that, it needs a sex and a birth time. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, for the sex, we pick a random value from the set of all possible sex values. We pick with equal likelihood. For the birth time, we use the current time, because the baby's going to be more born now. Hmm? We're adding the bid to the population. And that's what it is. We're birth only that simple, but uh, that's how it's represented in the model. Let's run this model. Okay? Well, first of all, let's see, how would we know if births are working? Just as a general principle, in terms of finding errors with your model, how would I know if births are working? Hmm. Set immigration to zero. Set immigration to zero. Yeah, I could do that. I, I could do that. There's actually an even easier way to do it, which I'll use. But that, that, that would work. Trace LN. I'd like you to know that. I'd like you to use it early. I'd like you to use it often. It's one of the most formidable ways of knowing what's going on in your model is to do a trace LM. But you're absolutely right. Another clever way of doing it is changing parameter values in a scenario and verifying, okay, with no immigration, are people coming in? And I might well do that in addition, just to make sure they're actually functionally being added. Trace LN will make sure an event is occurring. Here we go. I'm going to say, trace ln and sometimes I even just put very simple things like pound one that I got here but here I can actually do something more than that I can actually take the name of the baby this is this is a reference to the baby that's what's returned by add population and I can actually say in trace ln this that's the name of the mother gave birth to the baby. There we go. What this is doing is it's printing out when it reaches that place. It's printing out the joyous news. Okay? That this woman gave birth to a baby. Are we ready for that? Okay, 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 here we go. Um, I just verified it, okay. Sorry? <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll deal with that in a moment. Ladies and gentlemen, okay, gave birth to a baby. There we go. Okay, 
Ladies and gentlemen, how are we going to deal with the fact that we right now have centenarians giving birth to infants? We could have a fertility rate that depends on age. We've been this route before, haven't we? Mortality. Initiation rates. Fertility. This should be familiar stuff. How do we capture that? How do we capture it in the case of mortality? We used a mortality, baseline mortality rate by age. What sort of construct was that? We had initiation rate change by age. What sort of constructs were those? They were speak on table functions. So we'll drag in one more. Let's win one more for the Gipper. Okay. Okay. Okay, so this will be fertility rate by age. For age zero, it's going to be zero. Through age 12, we'll make it zero. Age 15, make it. This is going to. Hard thing for me to do off the top of my head. Uh, uh, sorry? Uh, age 18, 0 0.02. Age 20, 0 0.03. Uh, age 25, 0 0.1. Excuse me, 0 0.15. Uh, 0 0.15 uh, for age 25. Uh, age 30, age 30, come on. Uh, age 30, 0. Point, also do 0 0.15. Age 35, we'll make it 0. Point, 0. 0.10. Age 40, we'll make it 0 0.05, age 45, we'll make it, okay, 0 0.025, next, age, come on, age 50, 0 0.0005, 0 .00 and uh, after that, uh, We'll, we'll end up assuming that it's uh, that it's zero. Okay, so uh, age, let's say 55 and older, we'll assume it's zero. Okay, um, so here's the fertility rate by age. It's probably underplaying um, things. Out of range, we'll use the nearest value. So if it's above this area or that area, it'll be zero. Won't give an error. This is fertility rate by age. Okay, let's go through the rehearsal. It's the same basic shtick as before. How are we going to capture this by age? What do we need to do? Where do we need to use that fertility rate by age we just calculated? We need to do so here. Associate with this transition, the rate will be what? What will the rate be here? Fertility rate by age for the current age. Thank you. Okay, that's step one. What's the other step we have to do to get it to recalculate it on an ongoing basis? Guess what? This little thing, we have to copy it, move it over to get it to recalculate it. We're done. Now we have a fertility rate that depends on, oh, we're not done. Recalculation initiation hazard two cannot be re 
resolved to a variable. Okay, sorry, there's there's something curious here. It's probably something, that, okay. <coughs> what's what's going on here? Oh, that's interesting, which one? Oh, sorry. Okay, um, okay. Oh, Winchell, you're missing something fascinating. It's being recorded. <laughs> yeah, it's being recorded. Um, wow, okay, that's very, very interesting. Um, this was that, and this is this. Uh, Winchell, it's very interesting indeed, but um, this, this basically, it's, it's, it, it doesn't know about this thing I just dragged here. And when I'm building it, it's unhappy because it says it can't. Um, can it can't get results. Okay. Uh, well. Okay. So sorry. I don't mean to take you away from. Um, yeah. It's it's not actually resolving it. Um, no. 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 It's it's there. Okay. Um, no. Uh, we'll 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 resolve this. Uh, We'll resolve this issue. So what I'm going to do is, it's saying it's not knowing how to to, to uh, recognize that. It is complaining about this. Oh, that's exactly this leading problem. problem. Yeah, so we can delete it and get rid of, put in a new one, or, or we could close, close the model reopen and a reopen it. Yeah, that's all. Yeah, that's what I suspect would, okay. I, it's, it's, it's disconcerting, but I'll go and open it again. Here we go, boom. Um, Oh gosh. Yeah. Okay. Um, save as. Uh, this is shouldn't be called that anymore. Okay. Version seven. Boom. Okay. Now build it. Happy camper. Yep. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah. Okay, ladies and gentlemen. Now we have fertility taking place. We have birth taking place here. Let's go see the characteristics of the mother giving birth. Well, this is somewhat of an awkward way to loop through this. Ladies and gentlemen, you can tell me. Let's go, let's go rehearse this. Ladies and gentlemen, suppose we wanted in Maine to have a histogram showing the birth, the birth ages of the mothers for all births that have occurred to this point. Where, how do we do that? How do we do that? How would we add a histogram to Maine which shows the birth age of all the mothers? We've done a histogram before, and I'd like you to tell me how to do this. I know it's late in the day for you. It's even later in the day for me. Um, <laughs> Uh, yeah, we add a histogram, we add a histogram data object, and we'll add the record of the mother's birth, or of the, the mother's age at birth to, at, at the birth of her infant to, to that histogram data. So let's go to Maine, let's go down Maine, and ladies and gentlemen, let's go to any logics um, analysis. Analysis palette, and let's drag in histogram. And this is going to be called maternal age histogram. Now, what do we have to do? Beyond adding a chart, what do we have to do? A histogram is a chart. We need to add what? Uh, histogram, histogram data, exactly, exactly. So this will be called maternal age histogram data. Next, what do we have to do? We have to wire them to each other. The histogram has to refer to the histogram data. So we have to go add in the histogram data, uh, add in a data source and refer to the histogram data source. So this would be maternal um, age um, uh, at time of birth, a time of delivery. 
Okay? And the histogram data is maternal age and autocomplete histogram data. Okay? What is remaining to be done? We have to, yeah, we have to put data into it. Where are we going to import a data item to be recorded in this histogram? At the time of what? Entry into pregnant stage chart. E sorry? Entry into uh, when you're in the pregnant stage chart. Yeah, and when, and when you're delivering, exactly. So let's go, um, let's go here to person. And let's go to the pregnancy state chart. And at the time of delivery, let us go add that in. So we're going to add it into where? Where does that histogram data object live? Does it live in person? No, because it doesn't live in person, we have to say main dot maternal histogram histogram da age histogram data dot what we have to do we have to put a data item into it we do what to it we add add, add. add. okay this dot well we could just say current age we could have said this dot current age my current age is the mother we're going to add in the mother's age to this histogram data. Are we ready for that? Can we try this? Try or not? Okay, good, thank you. Okay, we're going to run it. You ready? We, to the maternal age histogram data, we're going to add the current age of the mother at the time of delivery. Are we okay for that? Great, ladies and gentlemen, here we go. Let's run this. Here we go, there's the age histogram. Here's maternal age histogram at time of delivery. We have about 200 samples so far. 300. It's a bit of a long tail on the upper side, but but uh, certainly it's concentrated in the peak childbearing years. You have some going on in the 40s, a tiny amount beyond that, but not bad. So now we have births occurring to a fertility set of fertility rates and those imply a maternal age at time of delivery, which is a little bit different because the mortality rate you know, is a nine month delay. And moreover, you know, a woman may have births at, at several different times, et cetera. And, and while she's pregnant with one, she's, uh, uh, she's not subject to, to conception for another. So, so this is the emergent pattern for maternal age at time of delivery, okay? Hazard rates. Familiar constructs from biostatistics. Familiar statistical concepts associated with densities, time densities. And we see how they play a role here. They play a role in terms of governing the timing of events. They play a role in terms of the state charts as a main mechanism. In addition to these timeouts, which provide a way of specifying a residence time in a state in a biostatistical sense. Ladies and gentlemen, one step forward, two steps back, two steps forward, one step back. <laughs> yes, indeed, that's better. Okay, I'm going to close this to go on to the next version. And I would like to uh, make this available to you in case anyone wants to download it.
Okay? We're going to undertake another step here. So here we go. I'm uploading it here. There we are. There it is. It's uploaded now. Okay, great. Ladies and gentlemen, our next step, our next quarry is going to be a different type of statistic. Suppose I wanted to keep track of I promised someone in the class that I'd, I'd provide an explanation. I try to do it this afternoon for something. And, and so I'm, I'm planning an example with that, right? Um, okay, ladies and gentlemen, um, I'd like to, to take uh, these state charts here, and I'd like to actually create um, something that records some longitudinal individual uh, information on an individual, okay? Specifically, I'd like to have, on the one hand, uh, a record of the number of cessation attempts that someone has made. How would I keep track of the amount of number of cessation attempts a given person has, has engaged in? We, said, we actually talked about it this morning. How would I do that? Sorry? Okay, statistic is a good idea, and, and we have to reflect on the fact that, and, and it allows us to reflect on what statistics do and what they don't do. Statistics provide us a way, now mark my words, let's go back to, where do statistics live? In the, in the population. Population, ladies and gentlemen. Let's go, let's go back to the population. Let's reflect on them. Here we go. I should probably, yes, I should probably 